everybody, I'm back. It's the second video of the day. I'm posting like crazy. Woo! I've got time between work, so lots of posting, lots of talking, because I feel like talking and being informative. Teaching. Okay, um, made a last video about art containers. This is art talk, I guess, number two. And we are going to talk about, oh gosh, all this stuff. What's that about? Let's talk about brushes and painting supplies. Yeah, that sounds good. Brushes and painting supplies. Gotta get organized a little bit. Okay. First off, as you saw in the last video, there have been several things I keep brushes in. Because hmm, I like brushes. And I've got so many pretty brushes. And they range from this is a cheapo brush. It used to have a coating. It was a Walmart brush. Yada yada. I should have another brush in there. Anyway, I've got stuff all over the place. As you probably think, ah, here's one. This cheap Walmart brush. It has no markings on it, so it's got no number two, no brand name. It is a cheap Walmart brush. And these are fine. Like, this coating might come off at some point. Like, it might kind of. Like, you can find it, this one is just the wood now because the brushes, I only got them soaked in water and they got all this, all this pretty colored stuff starting to chip off. But, I mean, who cares? It, it was a little bit annoying for a while because I kept getting everything covered in junk. Like, all those little chippies got on all my stuff. But, otherwise, fine, don't care. And these brushes, they last quite a while and they're usually pretty tough. And depending on what you work with, I usually work in watercolor, so my bristles are usually soft and they're springy. Like how all these brush bristles spring right back. So I've got cheap brushes and I've got expensive brushes. This is the most expensive brush that I own. It's one of the most expensive art supplies that I own. It is a one inch Cotman Winter Newton brush. This what's that? This single paint brush was thirty four dollars. That's ridiculous. Thirty four dollars that's like three meals at restaurants. But at the time I think I don't remember if it was on sale, but I bought this little baby two years ago, one year ago. I think it was two had it for a long ass time and the only damage to it is the bristles have started to kind of come out of their line when I first got it all the bristles were in a very tight line very tight and they've just now started to kind of dim out like that and then the the coating that has all come off on this brush on this brush it's very thick and it's only just started to chip on this side and you can even see how thick it is it's actually got, like, but really nice brushes will keep a long time. Like these little Walmart brushes that I've got. Some of these I've had for many, many years. But, like, there's paint all over the handles. Sometimes the bristles will start to bend and kind of fray. Like these on the very tip, the bristles are starting to go like this on the very tip. That's a weird finger trick I have. But otherwise, like, they're fine. And usually, nowadays, because I start experimenting with other mediums, um, for, when I, when a brush gets really old or really icky, and I just don't want to use it anymore, I retire it to the oil brushes. And then my, I've got completely separate, I keep my brushes I use for oil completely separate from the ones I use for watercolor. And that's important if you work with different mediums. So, oil brushes. Watercolor brushes. Oil brushes. Watercolor brushes. And I've got a couple long stick, long handled ones. And I just, since I use oil very rarely, I just threw them all in the oil bucket. And I know some people are like, oh, long brushes are so nice. They're annoying! You ever try 
tried to work with one of these, and mm -hmm. it, you got this like big stick coming out there. You just wave it around and get yourself in a space with it. That's why I don't use them often, and I rarely paint in oil. I've used them a couple times. And so these are all the brushes that are kind of... This one's not too icky, but I had another one like it, so I decided to put it in the oil. But most of these are, like, this is where most of the cheap Walmart brushes have ended up. Some of these are nicer. Like, these two brushes are much nicer. They're Royal. Number one round brush and a number 12 flat. And, like, my bristles will just get kind of gunky sometimes after a while, so just retire them to oil. And this was a one, a watercolor brush, so it's got the soft springy bristles. Usually for oils and acrylics, um, these kind of coarser, rough, thicker, nastier, less soft, like goat hair, I think, brushes. I, I don't know what exactly it is. But, mm. like, this is Contemporary Crafts. This came in a cheap kit from, like, Walmart, I guess. And they're really icky bristles, but those are recommended for oil and acrylic. Like a, it came in a set, like all different colors, and just all different types. And here's another one. Like these little clear handles. This is like a really cheap brush set that you could get anywhere. And you could use these brushes for just about anything. I could use them for watercolor, but they were from my grandpa, and he used them with like he used them in the garage, so they're covered in like coarse stuff. So they're put in the oil. And also, one of these things, house painting brush. All different types of stuff, all different like lengths of bristles up there. But it's good for big washes and stuff like that. And oh, bristles. Depending on what you're working with might help determine what kind of brush bristles you would like to get. Usually, working with watercolor, they tell you to work with like a mixture of synthetic and hair. And I, I use all kinds of different things. I've got some that are just pure hair, and then I've got others that are mixed, and some that are just synthetic. Like this is obviously not hair. This is obviously synthetic, I think. Or it might not be. <laughs> I can't tell that well. It's awful. But, um,. Hair brushes will hold water more. Like this is a hair brush. This is real hair. This is a sake or um, sumi painting brush. So it's 100% hair, and it is supposed to be like a little point, but it never wants to be a point. And it's got coarse hair and then goat hair. This is actually pretty soft, but it seems like the same kind of roughness. The sumi brushes are nice. This has got, this came in a kit, so I can unscrew that and put on a different one that I've got a couple. Those are nice if you're into that kind of painting style. I use them for, like, details sometimes. And this is a makeup brush. I use it for washes occasionally. But there's all kinds of brushes you can get, all kinds of different mixtures and textures and all that. I usually... I'll usually get it like a couple, like a set of Chibos, and then one or two, when I start working and I figure out what I'm leaning toward using, I'll go out and I'll buy that kind of brush. Like, like I say I'm working in watercolor a lot, and I'm doing a lot of washes, I'll go out and buy a $34 wash brush. And there's some cheaper, cheaper cheap brushes, there's like, there's those sponge things. If you like sponge things, go ahead and use them. I don't like them at all. They are for like, they're for like making signs with tempera paint and different types of paint. It's different as well. And there's all kinds of, and there's even like little specialty brushes like, ugh. like my watercolor palette here. This watercolor paint. It came with an itty bitty brush to fit in. It's a nice cotton watercolor round brush. And what type of brush you're using is 
really depending on what you're doing. I've had times when I'll be going and painting a picture, thinking, painting, whatever. Yeah. I'll just start using one brush and just for like an entire 30 minutes doing all kinds of stuff all over the painting, I'll just use that one brush. Because like this brush, a brush is dynamic. Like there's all different kinds of ways you can use it, obviously. You can turn it flat and do broad strokes, turn it to the side and do little fine lines. Especially since a nice brush, like this is a very nice brush, this is brand new. It's on sale, but it's, it's brand new. So all the bristles are very in a line. They get very tight up at the top. Which is great. Because you can do details, you can do broad work. Like there was a long time when I was using this turn to the side, loaded with water, and I was using that to take up fine lines. And this is a fat brush. But take it turning it to the side and using it like in a line to take up paint was quite effective because the whole length of the brush was taking up the paint, not just, it wasn't just like using a, it wasn't just like using a round brush and going, e -e 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 -e. I was able to do it all in one stroke. And round brushes, this is a really fat round, this is a number 12 round. It's fat. It's my favorite type of round. It's, it's just what you're comfortable with. There's really not, oh, you're making a line, you have to use a round brush. Oh, you're doing a wash, you have to use a flat brush. That's actually not a bad idea. If you're doing a wash, by all means, a flat brush is probably going to work better for you. And there's there's other types of brushes. There's specialty brushes. There's sable hair brushes. There's, like, whatever this thing is. that scruffy. This is called a scruffy brush. This is... Donna Dewberry. I had one of her painting sets. This is a Donna Dewberry scruffy brush. Which, she paints in acrylic. This works well with acrylic or anything else. So you basically go like this, mess the crap up out of it, dip it in your paint, and just do 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 texture. Instead of like, oh, how did you put all those tree textures on your painting? You must have been working forever with a little brush. And I'm like, uh uh. I worked for like five minutes with a scruffy brush. Or, alternatively, toothbrushes. Old toothbrushes, like look at this. This is all over the place. I don't want to use that on my teeth anymore. So, you load this up with some paint and you just flick it. And it like puts your little dots of paint. It's getting dots of stuff all over the computer. But, like that's a good for flicking. This is another old one. I use old paint brushes for cleaning or for splatter texture as it's called. And sometimes I'll use my scruffy brush and I'll just load up the scruffy brush with paint and I'll take another brush and just tap it on the handle to get your splatters. It's just whatever you want to do. And as well as brushes, they make dip sticks and shitty brushes to put on masking fluid. When you work with watercolor, you'll need to know what masking fluid is. It's like, um, you put it down, and it's like a liquid latex, it dries, paint over it, and then you can just take it up, and you have blue white canvas still. And they sell dipsticks. It's just like a piece of rubber, or whatever, I don't know. It's like a marker, like a felt tip marker, hard tip kind of thing. And then they make palette knives, for use of oil and acrylic. These are good, like, you know, you always see Bob Ross, if you watch Bob Ross. He'll take his little his palette of paint, and he's got a little palette of paint. Yeah, it's great. So he's got, he'll put it in a little line, like scratch it on his computer so it's like a little roll of paint. And he'll just like drag the brush and it's like mountain. It's like, how oh, the fuck? You make it look so easy, Bob Ross. I, I agree, he said. And so I've got a couple brushes that I've just donated to wax. And to wax and to thrift it. Masking fluid, thrift it, same thing. Other types of brushes. Oh, yeah, we got these fancy brushes like this one. It's another Donna Dewberry. It's to make lines, like long lines and decorative little viney things. It's fine for that. You can use, you can use a small round just the same. 
got small rounds, I've got small filberts. Okay, so basic terminology. Flat brush. It's flat and it's broad. Round brush. It's round and it's tapered. And they come in all different sizes. These are two drastically different size rounds. This is the number one and the number twelve. As the number gets bigger, the brush gets bigger. Uh, there's all different size flat brushes. You get two different size flat brushes. And again, the smaller one is a half inch, and the big one is a three fourths. Sometimes they number them like one, two, three to twelve, one being tiny, twelve being huge. Sometimes they actually will put the size, like they will measure the width and put it as a three fourth inch. And then you've got weird brushes like scruffy brushes and skinny brushes and then you have a neat style brush that I like that I recently have been turned on to called Silverts where it it's like your basic idea of a good brush it's like it's kind of like a flat brush instead it's not straight across the top it's contoured here's a number 10 and a smaller one with no number from the cheap Walmart. This is expensive. This is like, well, more expensive I'd say. This is like $8, which I got on sale. If you're going to buy expensive brushes, by all means, wait till Hobby Lobby has a sale. And you've got your diagonal brushes. There's a name for that. Angular shader. That's a good name for it. Angular shader. So I've got two here. This one is ratty as shit. This is probably should be in the oil. But I liked it so much I kept it in the watercolor. It's probably shitty because I used it with water soluble oil paint. And this is a nice pretty new one by Protege. And it was originally some other color. It was originally that color, but as I use paint in them, they turn different colors, like green. So these came in a set. And then just another type of brush. This one is one that I found recently at the brush sale at Hobby Lobby. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. It's a dagger striper, stripper, whatever. I'm going to say dagger stripper because it's funny. <laughs> but it's like it's kind of like the diagonal, the angular shader. It's kind of like that, except it's like really steep. And it's all, all along here, it's just like they shape it. So it can get really, it can, this brush is, the point is to be very versatile. It can do broad washes like that. It can do lines like that. It can do all kinds of things with different styles of brush in one. That's the idea, is a lot of different brushes in one, I guess, in one brush. And that's about it for types of brushes. But, then, oh, and fluffy makeup brushes. This one's very flat on top. It's a rouge brush or something. I, they sell them. I don't know exactly what you would use them for. Maybe like fluffy clouds or something. But there's other features to brushes that you can get. Like this one, the one that's like 15, 16 bucks. It, it's got a clear plastic handle, which is a master's touch. They do this in a bunch of different brands because it's got the clear plastic handle and on the end you can see it's like angled, very tough plastic angled into a point or just like shaved off so you can scrape with it. It's called a scraping end and that's part of why the brush is so expensive because when you paint whatever medium you can go in and just whip your brush and scrape and that's a texture mechanism. Okay, and then, I don't know if I have any, but they also make those, like, the cutesy little brushes you use as a kid with your little kitty watercolors. I don't have any of them because they're awful, but those, I wouldn't use those. The ones with the plastic bristles and the very plastic plain handles, those are awful. And then they sell some that are, like, fluffy hair brushes. They don't have the springiness that you need if you're working in watercolor. 
spring, spring, spring. It doesn't just flop out and not go anywhere. Like, that's even spring. Shedding hairs. I don't know why my singing brushes are shedding. Probably because I've used them wrong. But those are brushes. And even with oils and acrylics, it's still nice to have spring hairs in your bristles. And as far as palette knives go, you got all different sorts. These are different types of palette knives. Classic. I don't know what the freak that's supposed to be for. And you got this big broad thing that's just for, it's a scraper. And it also makes a really pretty noise. And then, oh, I guess I can talk about these. Sometimes when you're working with like watercolor and you want a very, very fine line, say black or something, you can also buy a quill. We've got another one somewhere. Here we go. You can buy quills and you can use nibs with them. They're good if you buy some ink or if you dilute some watercolor. You can also use those for your line work. This has got a complicated nib, like you would use for writing. Let's see it where you can see it. It's got lots of parts. That's the That's the part. And this nib is cool because it like folds open. It's got the three like a regular nib with like a coat of metal to hold more ink. And then this is a plain nib, just a plain piece of metal. And the quill, um, you can buy a fancy one with a feather, or you can just buy a stick with a place to put your quill in it. And then nibs, these are the nibs, and these are quills. And they just go in between the metal parts, or in between the plastic. There should be like a ring that just goes in there. Voila. So that's a good, those are good tools to use as well. And then that's about it for brushes. But brushes, oh, they're so nice. It's so much fun to work with a good brush. Like if you work your whole life with shit little things that fall apart after or three uses, to go to something a little bit more expensive like this is just so nice. Especially if it does, like when you get to working with the brush and you can feel it, and it just, it just works with you, and you can just work with it so easily. It's, knowing your brush is kind of like, it's just as important as knowing your medium that you're working with, and I can't stress that enough. And people that work with just pencils. Like, you can tell the difference between working with a mechanical pencil and your everyday regular number two. Like, you can tell the difference between working with one of these and a mechanical pencil. So, it's the same with brushes. You can, you can have a very distinct feel each one. So, just want to shout out to all my brushes. I could add all these other ones in. All my new brushes. Probably take out the makeup brush. Voila. These are all my watercolor usual use brushes. Oils are over there, you saw those. I don't care for oil. But on the brushes. Alrighty. Thanks for watching. And look forward to Probably in the next video I might do types of paint and tubes of paint, like tubes versus a palette. I might do that next. Anyway.